Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to round four edition of NRL Supercoach Off the Bench TLT. Um, I'm your host, Ross, and today I'm joined by Jacob from NRL Supercoach Projects. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks, mate. Uh, good to be here. Another uh, uh, another potty. How'd your, um, how'd your week go last week? Um, it went all right, considering I didn't have Nico. Uh, I think I finished with about 11.36 or 11.50, something like that, which was decent. A um, few people let me down a bit. Ezra Mann let me down a bit. But other than that, I I think I escaped. I had the C on Munster. So at half time I thought he was going big, but he had a pretty dull second half. So it wasn't too yeah. bad, though. Well, I um I didn't have Hines either. And you can tell the difference between those who did and didn't have Hines, especially those who captained yeah. him. And I'm pretty happy. I pumped out a 12.03 with no Hines, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, that's very, that's that, very that, good, that, mate. And that was with prayer on the bench as well. So, but I did play Warbrick, but um, yeah, yeah, I had right. both. I had, I had both them on the pine, which is, oh, to be honest, mate, you can only make a decision at the start of the week, you know. And that was to me, it was the best decision. So, well, I think I think Pereira was only twenty percent played, and uh, Warbrick was only ten percent played. So, not much. I ran I ran Warbrick the week before, thinking um, he'd he'd go off, but he didn't. So. I figured uh, this week with no Hughes, I thought, you know what, they're going to get left a lot, but they didn't. Yeah. So, anyways, happens. All right. We'll go to the team. So, the changes. So, Roosters versus Eels up first. Uh, so, for Roosters, Joey Mona's out suspended. He's replaced by Drew Hutchinson. Uh, Corey, and, uh, Corey Allen and White join the change bench, and Terrell May drops out. And for Parramatta, Junior Paulo suspended, replaced by Warren Mayer Gregg. And Jack Murchie joins the interchange bench. Not really much to talk about there, Jake, though, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I think Dury on the bench, I've still got him in my team. Um, sort of hard to get rid of him at his price. Um, you could probably get rid of him to Schuster, but I don't know. I'm, I really want to watch this uh, young fella, Brendan Hands. Um, I'm really considering next week, if he goes okay, I'm considering because I'm not running a second hooker at the moment, I'm really considering stripping Boyd to free up some cash. Then I can maybe jump on guys like Garrick and stuff. Um, give me a 200K in there. Yeah, well, I've, I've made that move this week uh, to I don't have to boost to bring in Hines. I've, yep. actually, gone, I've actually gone cheese down to Brendan Hands and banked yeah, nice. 270K, so, which, gets yeah, me, think... um, which gets me Franklin Pele to Nico Hines. Oh, wow. So... Pretty happy you're going from, trade. You're going from yeah. a Gemini a Gemini to a Ferrari. I had five hundred and sixty K in the bank, so that was handy. Yeah, so all right, um, next game is Raiders versus Panthers. So for the Raiders, Jack White is out suspended. Uh, Matt Foley will stay into the team, switching to five eight, and Jamal Fogarty returns. Uh, he was out late with an illness last week. And Jordan Rapana returns to a suspension, replacing James Schiller. Um, not really much to talk about this game either, I don't think either. I'm surprised that Rapana didn't get the fullback gig because for me, Seb Chris hasn't been very pretty average at fullback for the Raiders. Yep. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Zach Hosking starting. He's pretty yep. good. So Luke Garner's obviously out. So um, Zach Hosking starting is, I think, a big in. The other one I liked was. Um, Oh, Cleary. I'm getting Cleary this week because I didn't have him. So he's going to be a big one for me. Yep. Yep. So Luke Garner's out, out injured. Uh, Scott yep. Torrenson is named as his replacement. Uh, Liam Martin's out again. So Zach Hoskin holds his spot. But I feel like when Martin comes back that I think um, Garner will be the one to miss out. And I think that uh, Hoskins will stay in the team. Yeah, you're pro- I think you're probably right there, mate. Um, And then... Uh, Tony Luke is out with concussion, and Lindsay Smith and Tyron Peachy come onto the bench. Uh, for South versus Storm, uh, Hamel Sele is back from concussion, replacing Ben Lovett on the interchange bench. And for the Storm, Tom Eisen Huth is on the bench for Tyron Wishart, who drops out. Not much. Yep. No, there's not much. Yeah. I mean, the, all the team lists today were pretty yep. dull. Um, but yeah, I, again, this is like. I think Pazetz is a um, Trindle player all over again. Make 100k if you want. Uh, I probably won't be doing it. I definitely won't be doing it. But I can see if people want to make 100k, it's 100k. 
I think that's more for those who aren't bringing in Hines this week. They're going to use it as a yep. stepping stone because um, well, you'll make about 100K. Yeah. But my question to you is, is it worth two trades? Well, people say it's two trades, but I think it's one because if you're already getting in Hines, that's one trade going anyway. So it's one extra trade. Yeah. So I if guess you're going like someone like Sam Walker to Hines and you're going to do that regardless, yeah. Well, that's one trade. But if you do the if you do the Pizette, then it makes it two trades. Now that makes Hines all of a sudden eight hundred k. So is it? Yeah. You know. And then if he do, if he does have another big round this week, all of a sudden he's you're getting him for eight hundred k. And if he does make fifty, he's you know you've got a bargain. I tell you what, I was a bit. Um... Bit nerve wracking watching him that game on the weekend, not owning him, and um, I'd be feeling the same this week if I didn't own him, especially when he averages over 100 against the Warriors as well. Definitely, mate. Like I'm, I'm, I'm crapping myself. I'm just trying to find my charger here. My um batteries just clicked up 10, percent so I'm just trying to find a charger. All right. So for Manly versus Knights, Manly Cool is out injured, replaced by Morgan Harper, and Lockman Croker returns from injury with Carl Lawton dropping to the reserves. Uh, for the Knights, Kurt Mann's out with concussion, replaced by Jack Johns. Um, next game, Dragons versus Dolphins. Dragons, no changes. Dolphins, uh, big inclusion here because Marshall King comes back from suspension. Mason Teague drops to the bench. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan's a big out for the Dolphins as well. Um, with um, Milford switching to the, to uh, halfback and uh, Katawa returns from injury at 5'8". Uh, Tessie News out, injured, replaced by Jack Bostick. And Herman S.A. returns from injury with um, Posse from the last Sarsi, dropping to the reserves. Good try there, mate. I tried. I tried. Um, Tiger. Yeah, so I'm... Yep. Okay. You just grab my big charger. Not upstairs. Sorry, mate. My battery's uh, clicking. Yeah, so... Um, what were you saying? Sorry, mate. Sorry. My I was just saying, Marshall King's a big in for the um, Dolphins. Big in. I've got him in my draft, and I think uh, it, it's going to change that Dolphins attack big time. I'm um, not having Sean Sullivan, though. Could be a little bit, but I think he's a big in. Big yeah. in. Yeah, definitely. They've, they've definitely missed him through the middle there the last two weeks. No doubt yep. about that. I agree, mate. All right, next game is Broncos versus Tigers. For the Broncos, no changes. For the Tigers, there's some changes to the bench with Dane Laurie, Alex Seaforth, and Sean Ball dropping out. Replaced by Simpkins, Star Fatoa, and Justin Matamuma. I'm not sure why they're running with that bench. Why you'd have a backup hooker and a backup centre on the on the bench? You're a, yeah, Tigers, I'm, I'm... you're a Tigers fan too. What's your thoughts on that, mate? To be honest, I I think they're just trying they're just trying different things. Obviously, what's what they've started with isn't working. They've got a lot of outside backs who could probably play back row. Yeah. So maybe they're going for a more defensive lineup. Um, I'm not sure, but yeah, they're definitely trying something different there, which sort of I don't know. It, it it's a bit of a head scratcher, but they've got to try something. Yeah. All right, so sharks versus. They, yeah. Yep. Yeah, go, mate. No, sharks versus warriors for the sharks. Trindle returns from injury. Lauren and Kafusi out with concussion. Uh, for the warriors team, Marie Martin's out with concussion, replaced by Ronald Volksman. Uh, Wade Egan returned from concussion with Freddie Lussick dropping to the reserves. Um, not really much there, obviously, for those who have got Trindle. I think most people will be selling him anyway um, this week to Hines. But if you're not, I'd hang on to him because um, even if he comes on for five minutes, he'll still make you a decent amount of cash. So he's probably worth hanging on to on the Hines. Yeah, I'm I'm a big – so I'm torn big time on Hines this week. Um but we'll get into that later. Yeah. The big thing for me with the the Warriors is Volkman coming in. So I don't know how he's going to go. Uh, I was actually at the game, the Warriors game on the weekend, so it was good. I got to see it up front. Um, Wade Egan back's a big one, but they are losing to Murray Martin. So, um, and he was really good. But you know, who was really good to watch live, Sean Johnson. He's he's uh, turned back the clock this year, hasn't he? Really, he's um. Mate, he had he had kick out just targeting him. And he did not take a backward step. It was it was good to see. Yeah. All right. So Bulldogs versus Cowboys. Uh, Farmer Brown out injured, replaced by on the bench by Josh Reynolds, and uh, Franklin Pele replaces Jaden Tanner on the interchange bench. 
Uh, for the Cowboys, Murray Talangi and George Shibasaki are both injured, replaced by Ped Hick, who returned from suspension, and Brendan Elliott comes into the side. Uh, Nanai is out suspended, replaced by Lukey, and Mitch Dunn joins the interchange bench. Um, I think Lukey could be a bit of a sneaky one to watch too, potentially as well, if his price drops. Um, yeah, I agree, because I feel like Cohen S. Cohen S is not performing. Um, and I feel like even when Nanai comes back, Lukey's got a chance here to cement his spot into the team if he can just yep. perform for the next two games. Um, yeah, definitely I, but, I definitely for those who are playing draft, definitely one to look out for those playing draft, no doubt about it. I'll be um, having a look at him for sure. Would you run Would you run Alamotti this week in your team? At the well, moment, I am. Then... I am. I am. Um, I'm going to run him. I, well, obviously can't run Pereira because they've got the bye. And also Warbrick's coming up against South. But I think South's a pretty defensive, good defensive team. So I'd probably run Alamotti instead. So I'm, I'm, I've got to pick either him or Hammer for my last reserve. And I think I'm going to go the Hammer. Just because yeah, they're playing that, the dragons. Yeah, I, if if you're choosing between those two, uh, I would go, I would go hammer. But I'm I'm going to play both. Um, yeah. Because I've got hammer as my backup, um, fullback at the moment. Because I traded oh, nice. Teddy up. I traded Teddy up last week, but next week will be Teddy. It'll probably be hammer back to Teddy next week. I reckon. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So we'll, we'll go through the trade outs now. So number one on the list is Cameron Murray. I think that makes sense. He's been a bit underwhelming, but I. Was, Really think the last week was probably the week to sell if you were going to do it because you already uh, lost about fifty k last week. Yeah, I, I I I've got him on the cutting block this week, and uh, I didn't really want to, and I had no plan to. So I had a plan this week to do two trades. I was actually going to go Dury to Schuster, and then go Tanner Boyd or Marnie to Cleary. And that actually left me enough money. And I was actually planning on running Mitch Moses of my second half with Cleary for about the next five, six weeks while Parry go on their run. Yeah. But Heinz has just changed everything. I think I don't think I can go without him. So now I'm selling Clear, uh, Murray down to Schuster to free up that money so I can get Heinz. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a very popular play. A lot of people are going to go Murray to Schuster to free up. Well, you're going to free up about 400K. Potentially yep. there. Um, yeah, um, makes sense. Well, number two on the list is Adam Dewey. Um, look, 571K, I mean, he dropped, he punched around 50-odd last week in a team that only scored 12 points. Um, if you're using, if you're selling him to get to, uh, to get lines, I get it, but I don't know if I'd be selling him to another 5'8", like maybe Munster, but what are you well, your did... thoughts on that? I did Munster last week because they were coming up against the Tigers and yeah. I think I told you I captained him. So, yeah. um, look, the only thing I can say is they've got Broncos, Para, Manly, Penrith. Now, he's probably going to be dominated every game and maybe looking at that 50 points every game. But if you look at the Storm game, the Storm draw for the next month, have a look at their draw. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty hard too. They've got South and a few other decent teams in there too. I know, but it's Munster. I yeah. know it's so Munster's always sort of been draw proof. Yeah, it did cost me a bit of money. I get it, but now my halves will be Cleary, Hines, Munster, and then I've got Ezra Mam in there. So like, I'm feeling like my halves are pretty strong at the moment with that, and I think I can leave that all year. Yeah, but I I think that's just set now. Yeah, number three on the list is Sam Walker. Um, obviously mostly going up times with that. I think it makes sense. Yeah, that's a no brainer really. Um. Interesting one here. Taylor Harris is number four on the list now. He's been named to play this week. Um, so, again, 36-36K. Um, I'm presuming a lot of people are probably going to who down the street but to bring in Hines. Um, if that's probably what you're doing, I don't hate that at all. Do you agree? No, yeah, I think so. I think, um, I think he's important to that team, but, you know, I think with his knee, he, he didn't look great. He was limping around, but I've got no in, idea. It could have just been a knock and he could be fine. The other thing, too, sure. is that, the other thing too is that there's no guarantees he plays 80 this week either. If he's carrying an injury and he's not right, they probably won't play him 80. Yep. Number, I agree. Five, list, number five on the list is Braden Trindle. Makes sense. I think most people are going to go to Hines. Um, yep. 
Next one on the list, Tanya Boyd, same thing. I think with Tanya Boyd too, be the same go with him. I think most people are going them. Uh, number seven repeats itself, Adam Reynolds. Again, yep. most people would be going. I saw it, and you know what? Last week, I nearly did it. Um, I nearly went Dewey to Reynolds. And I was doing it all week, and then I just went, you know what? Well, I don't want to. I was watching the Tigers game, and I went, uh, and I didn't want to do it because I'm a Tigers fan, because there's nothing worse than uh, captaining a bloke in your own team. Yeah. But I, I did it, and uh, anyways. So, yeah, I nearly went Reynolds, and I know a few people who did, and it would have been. And actually, they went Reynolds over Hines, and it would have been horrible. Well, I know that I saw last week that there was a few people who traded Nico Hines out last week to bring in Adam Reynolds. Yeah, right. So no, no doubt most people are going to both know that they'll be reversing that trade back again this week. So, Mate, yeah. that's, that, that could be the worst trade I've ever heard of. Number eight on the list is Ruben Collar. Makes sense. He's out injured. Uh, number yep. nine is Luke Garner. Again, makes sense. He's out injured and probably potentially not holding his spot with um, the way Hoskins what, is going. What was wrong with Garner? Like, is he is it a long injury? Just this... No, I don't think so. No, no. Okay. No, but I, I still expect I still expect Hoskins to hold his spot. It's just a matter of whether they're going to play him on the on the um left edge or not. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Number ten on this is Latrell. Uh, been very underwhelming this year, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he's just he looked like he copped a hit in that first or second game, and um he was limping, and I don't think he's been the same since, but. Again, he's just a guy that he doesn't need much. He doesn't need. He's not an eighty-minute effort player, but when he does stuff, he's just. If he was an eighty-minute effort player, he'd be the best player in the call. He um, he's a bit like he's a bit like Cody. Um, has he's very hit and miss. Um, they either have a really good game or they have a really bad game. There's nothing in between. I mean, Cody scored an eighty on the weekend with two tries, which is pretty pretty average if you ask me. You take out those two tries, and he probably bangs out about a thirty or a forty. Yeah, well, he's well, he, he doesn't do much in base, I suppose. Cody, he's not gonna, he hasn't got the body shape to be doing hit ups and stuff like Dewey, and yeah. um, he'd just get creamed if he did. So, but he does what he does do well. Cody's the best player I've ever seen on a three on two. He's just unbelievable. Yeah, he looked, he, he did look pretty dangerous in that game. I've got to say, he nearly scored three actually, and got close to another one. Well, I think Cody will be in my team at some point because I love having him. I love watching him. And I think Latrell is definitely for me. I've got Reese Walsh and I've got Tommy Turbo back there, and I could see myself by the end of the year having it'll be Latrell or Teddy going out for Walsh. I don't know who. Yeah, yet, I, I don't. I don't see Walsh turning. I don't see Walsh becoming a keeper. I think he's just a catch no. grab for everyone. Well, um, not when you got Latrell and Teddy there. Like I could see Turbo staying on my team, but I I can't yeah. see the other two. The only thing about Turbo is, like I love him, but he does have those scores of thirty versus the good teams, where I feel like Teddy and them don't. Teddy's yep. always going to get you 50 or 60. So, But versus a weak team, Turbo can get you 100. Hey, but to be fair, like Turbo scored 53 on the weekend and should have got another try that was called forward that was two metres backwards. So yep. he could have easily have turned up in that game. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I, yeah. And Teddy, like you said, he's, he's been dangerous every single game so far. Um yeah. Well, there's been there's been three times this year, maybe four, where he's been one pass off, oh, like off scoring two, three more tries. Well, that game that I can't remember who it was against round two, and yeah, when Warriors. Swarley did pass to him, and then he dropped one when he was on the open line too. So he was actually thumbed up that game. I actually, I actually went to that game and I was and I had captain on him. So <laughs> you would been you would have been uh, then. I was nearly I was nearly going to run on and throw my pass myself. All right, we'll go to trading. Number on the list, um, no guesses to that. Who is Nico Hines? Um, nearly 20,000 traded in this week. Um, I'm seeing, God, I'm seeing a lot of teams that people that are tearing apart their teams to get him in. And I'm, For me, with a buy coming up, I think this is the Apple opportunity to bank to down, do some decent downgrades and pick him up after his buy. Um what do you th- what do you thought what are your thoughts on that or do you really think you've got to have him like to well, have my thing is so for me and my team personally I he makes my team a lot stronger he gives me a really strong fourth reserve this week um because if I don't go him 
I've probably got to go. I'll, I could have Reed Marnie as my fourth reserve, but he's been pretty underwhelming. So the only bad thing for me is personally, I've got to use a boost, which is my third boost corn to get him. So there is a world where I wouldn't. And you know what? The Warriors, I've watched them last week. They let a try in in the first two minutes and then they let a dog crap try in after a bad decision where they just probably lost a bit of concentration. But They've only considered three, two tries three times and three tries once. So, yeah, they're the, be- they're the best, best defensive team in the comp at the moment, um, which who'd have thought we'd be saying that in round four to the, about the Warriors. Like, they seem to be well, a completely different team this year. They are. They got the, well, they've got the defensive coach from Penrith there. So, you know, he's 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 unbelievable. He's done, he's done a really good job and I hope he keeps it up. So, I it's think good to see what? the Warriors fighting. I think they've bought. Well, I think they've bought the best out of any team this year too. Yeah, I think, I think the Foray, so. the Foray, been... Barnett, um, Jackson Ford. They've had some really good pickups there. Well, Dylan Walker, Dylan Walker for me has been. Mate, like, he's been he hasn't been great in Super Coach, but he's been um, huge. So just watching their, but their effort plays is what's getting me. It's just yeah. they're unbelievable. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm actually turning into a bit of a Warriors fan because I'm loving watching them. So. How could you not? How could you not love a team? That has had to play away from home for basically two years. How could you not? Like they, well, they got, the cop, they basically they've, kept the cop running. So definitely, and they've got um this year. I think they've got reserve grade and stuff back as well, which I think yeah. is going to be big for them as a club. So because do you remember when they used to have Toyota Cup and all these feeder stuff? They were on, they were in the finals every year. Yeah, they'll win in Toyota Cup. They'll win in everything. So. Um, hopefully it'll, that comes back because they're a good side to cheer on and they, they yeah. play expensive football. All right, number two on the list is Josh Huster. Um, I think, you yeah, know, no brainer Look, really. Do you know what? After watching him on the weekend and even that first week, I'm not the biggest fan, but it gets me to, like that first week, I think he got two or three try assists and still only scored three, three points. Three try assists and he got 59. Yeah. And then this week, I mean, but then... He, if you've got him there and you just want to pick when you're playing, like this week I'll play him against the Knights. Um, yeah, you've got to play him. just going to be playing him on matchup. Yeah, and then I won't play him for two weeks because they've got Penrith and Melbourne. But then yeah. I'll bring him back in for the Tigers and Gold Coast. So that's all you well, got to do with him. Well, again, if, if Turbo had to score that try, he would have got the try assist and the line break assist for that. So yeah, would have okay. made his score look a little bit better. Um, yep. Right, but he's really good to watch. Really good to watch. Yeah, he is. It just doesn't seem to be turning in the points at the moment. <clears throat> Number like three. A lot of. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Go. go. No, you're right. I was just saying that a lot of a lot of people are. I've seen a lot of people getting Garrick in, which all well, I think they were planning to. But and then when they're playing against Penrith and Melbourne the next two weeks, I know Melbourne is Melbourne. They're struggling a bit, but they're still Melbourne. Like it's only a matter of time, I think, before they'll be back to nearly their full spine in a couple of weeks. They still, so won't you think, Pap- they still won't have Pappenhausen back. Well, I think didn't they say like round nine, round ten? Oh, I think I think that's all talk. From what I'm hearing, it's going to be at least at least round thirteen, maybe longer for him now. Yeah, right. Okay. Because just imagine when they've got Hughes, yeah. Grant, Munster, Pappenhausen. I think their weakness is still their um is still their centre wings, still very weak. Yeah. Really. Um. Well, but obviously. You get Pappenhausen back and you move Nick Meany back to the wing and, you know, that sorts out part of the issue. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, number three on the list is Jackson Ford. Um, yeah, he's been been pretty good this year. You know, he had one game where he went off the HIA pretty early in the game. Um, he'll make a stack of cash again this week because the two or whatever he got in that with the HIA will um, come out of his rolling average. So he'll make a decent amount of cash this week. Um, well, yeah, if you look at that game, that was I think that was the first or second hit up of the game. Yeah. Um. So, and other than that, he's at fifty nine and seventy two, pretty much in base. I think he had a line break last week, but I'm I'm a big fan of him. I, I was lucky enough to start with him, so um, he'll I'll be running him this week for sure. Yeah. Number four on this is Payne Haas. Um, just unbelievable. I got him in my team last week, and um. Yeah, he's, he's, he's dead set lock and load for the whole year, that bloke. I won't be trading him out. Yeah, I, st- I started with him. I was lucky. He was one of my picks that I got right. So he's just been – well, just when you watch him, he's just – like I refresh the app in about 10 minutes and he just goes up 15 points. Yeah. Just in base and you go, well, how did he do that? And he, he gets a lot of – he gets some decent updates too because of the, all the offloads and stuff that he does as well. 
I know we've had some good players in the game, and I know a lot of people talk about, you know, your web keys, your seven receivers, but yeah. for me, he is the best prop, hands down. I know he hasn't got that resume yet, and the um, but he's a he's the fittest bloke I've ever seen. You know? If he, they needed him to play eighty minutes, you play eighty minutes. There's no doubt about that. If they needed him to, it's not just it's not just his runs. His post contact meters, he always hits and drags them six to ten meters every time. He never goes back. Like guys like Welsh, they sort of hit and spin and look for an offload. His post contact meters is just that's what makes him so impressive. Yep. Number five on the list is Jonah Perzet. I think we've spoken about him. Obviously. People are going to probably go Trindle or another halfback down to him to bank some cash. He's projected to make about 100k, and then obviously go to Hines after the buy. Yeah, I think. Look, you can do it if you're flush with trades, but I, I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, number six is Reese Walsh. Uh, 656k he made 100k last week. Um, still got a pretty low break even. Um, Question is, would you be bringing him in this week? I mean, they play the Tigers, so he could carve them up. But for me, it seems a bit late to be jumping on Walsh now. Look, I like him because they have got Tigers, Raiders, Titans, um, and then their draw toughens up with Para, Souths. So I, I actually like him. He's involved in a lot. Yep. And the way he gets the ball, and I know I heard a lot of people blowing up about him getting a try assist for where I think Arthur's scored. Now, I watched it, and without his speed getting on the outside of his defender, that was no try. Yeah. So I, I do get there was like a double standard, but he got the ball and just accelerated and created that overlap. Look, it's always the sweeping play goes to the, it always goes to the fullback on those sweeping plays and stuff too. So. Well, but yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't worry about swinging. I mean, let's face it. Like. Yeah. I know Herbie did do Herbie did do some good stuff too. I'm not discounting yeah. that, but. I feel like while she saw the acceleration he did, that's what that's what got outside of the man. So, yeah. All right, number seven on the list is Luis Katoa. Um, geez, he's been brilliant this year, hasn't he? I mean, I started got him, I started him yeah. after his trials, and he just looked impressed, super impressive. Yeah, I was the same. I um, I got lucky starting him, but geez, mate, he's got hands like feet. Yeah, like how many times has he? He just does. He's rocks or diamonds, but he's he's a good player. He just he just seems to be in the right spot at the right time. Yeah. Um. And again, he accumulates tackles and stuff that I don't even notice. Yeah. So um. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of his. So I think yep. when when Hughes come back comes back and they start getting a good relationship, I think it's only upward for him. Yeah. Right. Number eight on the list is Zach Hoskins. Um. Got two thousand trading him in. It's a bit of an old one. Jay, considering we don't know whether he's going to hold that spot or not when Liam Martin comes back. I think you'll find people are probably thinking they're going to get 70 or 80 out of him this week. And also, there's a chance, I mean, maybe they're going Murray to him. Right? To free up money for Hines, I'm not sure. But um, to be honest, I think there's more upside in him than there is in Schuster. Yeah. And if you could afford to go Murray to him, Rather than Schuster, only I know Schuster's going to play eighty minutes, but I'm just not sure of him yet. I don't know. I, don't, I feel like he's not going to have a hundred. Yeah. I feel like number, uh, Hosking can do that. Number nine on the list is uh, a very interesting one, and I'm still scratching my head that this is uh, the brick. Um, not sure why two thousand people are trading him in this week. I mean, he's had one decent score against the Tigers. They're coming up against South. Uh, yes, he will make a bit more cash this week, but I think this is a ludicrous trade. I'm, I'm guessing it's a downgrade to potentially bring in Hines. Um, I'd say so too, mate. I'd say there's someone who they've got. They could have other players not performing. I'm not sure, mate, to be honest. Right. I mean, you haven't really missed the boat with him because he's on only 280k, and maybe uh, these are people who missed out on Khan Pereira, who sold him round two. Yeah. So I'm not sure. But uh, look, there's still money to be made there. So... I think the money's not the issue. I think points is the issue. Like Definitely. I said to you, with the draw that they've got coming up, is I can't see him making a lot of cash. So, yeah, well, if he, I think I looked, I'm looking now. If he has a 39, 39, he'll make you 120k over the next two weeks. Yeah, but he's got to have 39s. So, yeah. All right, number ten on the list is Big Tino's brother Isaac. Um, obviously they're on the buy this week. I can only see this being a downgrade option to 
bring in Hines. Um, if people are bringing him in thinking that they're going to get decent minutes out of him, it's, it's he's going to be a dead set slow burn. He played 25 minutes the first game. He played inflated minutes last week because they lost both Brimson and um, Kieran Foran, so he played like 47 minutes last week. But if, both, if both of them are back and they've got a full stack bench um, for the next game after the bye, I don't expect him to play 25 minutes, so he's definitely going to be a slow burner. Yeah, mate. Like, I, to be honest, I didn't watch the game, so I, I didn't see him, but I haven't even looked at him. That's how much of a – he hasn't been on my radar. So um, I have heard people bringing him in, but again, who for? Stefano? I don't know. I don't know. I've already got Murdoch Masilla there too, who's – I reckon he's he's diesel, mate. He's the slowest burn you can get. So I don't think um, especially when he's pumping out twelve, especially when he's pumping out twelves in eighty minutes. Man, I watched the trials in the charity shield and stuff. He looked really sharp. Like he made a few breaks and set up a try, and I was like, oh, okay, he might be able to get forties, fifties, but he could be one of those players. Look, I've got no interest in selling him because I've got no one to sell him to. Yep, he'll be there just for me. So I got no choice. Um, although he's an issue because this week I've got Tanner Boyd there and. I've got a perfect option for a VC loop with having that buy person, and um, yeah, he could he could ruin that. So I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for uh, round four TLT and trade trends. Jake, thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it. And um, no worries, mate. We'll be back Sunday for our round five wrap. Until then, have a good night and good luck for the week. Thank you. Yeah. See, See you, everyone. Bye.